Okay, Nick Dutch here again, great and glorious, soon to be famous, and blah de blah de blah. You've heard my videos before, you know who I am, how's it going? Okay, personal experiences, talking to entities. Uh, this is where it gets a bit weird, trippy, and complex. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm doing videos about the New Age occult and the spiritual, now I'm saying it's going to get all weird and trippy and complex. Okay. All I can do is um, tell you what I've experienced. One time, out of ill health, I did uh, an astral projection. I was out of my body and two spiritual beings appeared just as real, seemingly in my uh, complete out-of-body experience as everything I'm seeing around me now. Um, it was in the proper full bodily exteriorization, so everything uh, that I saw had a bluish-yellow milky hue to it. Um, and when I did communicate with the spiritual beings, it was just like having a conversation between you and me. That's, that's what it was like. That's one type of spirit contact. Uh, another type of spirit contact is when you're doing it through dreams, in which case it can be allegorical, it can be um, symbological, in which case you're never sure whether you're getting the right message or not. Another level is that of spirit reading, you know, um, sorry, psychic readings, in which case you're getting ideas, thoughts and feelings appearing in your head, and you don't know quite how real they're going to be. Um, but, you know, I've done some readings for people when ideas popped into my head that I didn't think would be real at all, and hey presto, it turns out I was accurate as fuck and really scared shitless the people I was reading for. Sorry, I shouldn't be swearing because YouTube's got a new uh, policy in place and I'm going to be ranked down. But hey, you know, the people who are searching for my stuff will search for my stuff anyway, so let's not worry about that. Um, the third method of contact from spirit to the likes of you and me, namely the immortals, is through what I call the bolt of lightning. Now that's, um, that's very peculiar. That, that, that often happens once you've done the invocation of a spiritual force, which could be a powerful one perhaps, or, um, or a scary one. And let's say you didn't send it back properly. You didn't tell. You didn't vanish properly. It's still lying around. And basically, when you go to bed, you ask it a question very ag aggressively, and it then throws an answer back into your head equally aggressively. And it feels like you've just been given a short jolt by a by a bolt of lightning. And often you don't you don't feel the end. You know, when you're invoking that type of entity, you don't always feel its presence. You don't always see its presence. You don't always notice it's there. And then let's say on that night you go then go to bed, and you may get a few weird, minor, subtle sensations during um, during your early stages of going to sleep. But then you try and talk to it the moment you're in that other state of consciousness of just dropping off to sleep. And then you'll get something weird happening. You may get the bolt of lightning effect. Now what I'm not going to do is go through the he said this, she said that, and all that kind of stuff because I just don't think it's all that relevant. Um, I mean, is there a way of saying that the spirit's going to be useful to you? Well, no, it's, no, you can't tell that. You, you, just as you can't trust your best friend and the information that they give you because they've been looking at you know the wrong type of websites or whatever, you can't trust what you're hearing from a spirit either. You've got to be very objective and critical and rational. If you're the kind of person who's prone to just believe stuff, then keep the fuck away from the occult because you know. Don't be a believer. Be a critical, rational investigator. Only believe in something when you're doing your ritual, and then afterwards you've got to stop believing it. All right? That's that's how you keep yourself sane and safe, because otherwise you're going to be mm -hmm, fucking mental, man. You know. I suppose there is another type of spirit contact that can happen, and that is when you actually get the um, the symptoms of being possessed or having a uh, a daibak, as some people call it, as the um, Hebrews and Kabbalists call it, which is a spirit which attaches itself to you. It can be very difficult to fight off, especially if you're in a physically weakened state. Um, but it can seem to communicate to you, especially when you're when you're tired. It can seem like a little voice in the back of the side of your head. You can usually remove those using an, um, incense made from sage. For some reason, it just seems to work. I, I, I don't fully understand why. Maybe sage scares these things away. Maybe sage lifts these things out of your bioplasmic aura. I mean, all this stuff remains theory. All this stuff remains perception. It remains subjective. Uh, which is where things get like, um, 
often difficult because people will then come to you and say, you know, you're lying to yourself. They'll give you like a straw man argument to discredit you. And oh God, it's you know, it's hectic. Um, but that's that's the way it can be. It, it is just a subjective experience which you got to play around with. But um, again, don't worry about them too much. Try and experiment with just a few different types of spirits whatever you feel comfortable with because you're building up your own occultism you know you're not you don't have to follow the tradition because the only people who say that are people who are trying to promote a religion which means they're a bunch of uh, mind controlling wankers you know you can just like get rid of those fuckers they're they're not good for you all right that's all for now i'll do another one in a few seconds good fortune god bless Man, I'm going to sleep well tonight. <laughs>